friends. Today I am here to talk about sewing up cardigans. So I've never made a cardigan. I have been sewing garments for like six, almost seven, it'll be seven years in the spring, but I've never made a cardigan. I had a handful of ready to wear cardigans, so I just didn't need to. But I recently had a wardrobe clear out because I really needed it. Uh, <laughs> the cardigans that were there, I had worn like well, well beyond their, their lifespan. So I need some new ones and I've got this like gap in my wardrobe. It's something I've never sewn. So I thought it would be fun to take you guys along with me in looking at uh, what patterns, what fabrics I wanna use and kind of do like a little comparison. So I am calling this the uh, Carnival of Cardigans. It's a little dramatic. I was thinking like, oh, if I had timed this better, I could have like done my three in, and like ended in February and then called it Carnegall, like for Carnival, cause that's happening right now. Anyway, um, I was really inspired by Teresa of Lost My Thread. She, her, she does um, some series called Clash of the Patterns where she does these really in-depth reviews and comparisons um, of three or more patterns in the same like type. So her most recent one was the topmost trouser tournament. Uh, <laughs> very good on alliteration there. Uh, and it was so, so good. So she, yeah, again, went really in depth. She compared three patterns. Again, they were trousers. So she looked at like crotch depth. She looked at instructions and sizing. She made muslins and like reported back. Um, yeah, they're so great. I highly recommend that you check them out. I'm going to link them below because also you should just go subscribe to Teresa's channel because she's fantastic. So I really wanted to do something like that, but I'm not gonna go as in depth. And the other thing is that I have chosen patterns, instead of doing three that are fairly similar to find like the best of that type, I have picked three pretty different, pretty different shapes um, to kind of decide what kind of cardigan I am liking or wanting. So I'll make these three, maybe pick a favorite and then probably like make a couple of more because again, I like don't have any now <laughs> since I got rid of them all. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking the format. So today I'm going to introduce the patterns and the fabric. And then I'm probably just gonna like work my way through them throughout the spring. So I don't have like a definite date of when I will like, reveal them all together. But today we'll talk about patterns and then at some point in the middle of my process, I'll do another video comparing the instructions and the construction. A little bit about like my sewing experience between the three of them. And then I'll do a last like reveal where I bring them all together and you can see like the fit and I'll give like kind of my overall thoughts about cardigan sewing. Like I said, I'm probably gonna take them like one at a time. So you may see them in like monthly makes videos, having little, uh, little sneak peeks here and there. But uh, yeah, so that's what I'm planning. The other thing that I thought was really important was to keep my fabric the same. So I'll show you what I have. So I have these three and I think they, I think they look super cute together. Um, I got these two are from, where did I buy these? A textile stad. Um, and then this one I bought in person in Amsterdam at Booken. Now they are all Rib knits, um, I'm pretty sure, well, there's like inescapable hair there. They're all rib knits. They're all 95% cotton, 5% spandex. They all have a really similar stretch percentage. Obviously like these are the same two in the same line. This one is ever so slightly, like, wow, where did I 
where was I keeping these? Why is it covered in hair? Like not even cat hair, like my hair. Anyway, sorry. This one feels like slightly drapier. Again, I'm pretty sure they're the same line because when I ordered these two, like there was an ochre colorway. So I'm pretty sure that they're the same, but they're at least gonna give me a really similar idea. Um, if I find it is like super different, I'll go, for the sake of the experiment, I'll go uh, pick up another one of these because they're, they're not expensive. Um, I think they were like 10 bucks a meter and I got two meters of all three of them. So 20 bucks for a cardigan, like it's pretty good, I think. Um, so yeah, these are what I'm gonna use. Now I have not assigned like which pattern is going to go with which color just yet, but uh, I'll let you know, keep you uh, in the loop. But yeah, these are my fabrics. Okay, so getting ready to look at patterns, I've picked three that are all in the advanced beginner category. I'm probably like, closer to an intermediate sewist, but because I have never made a cardigan before, I just wanted like fairly low key, uh, nothing too crazy. And I also made sure that all of these patterns go to at least a 58 inch hip. Uh, that's really important to me with my pattern buying. So I'm basically gonna discuss the three in order of like what I look for in a pattern. <laughs> so first is always sizing. Um, so I wanna have an idea of like what the size range is, are there bust cup options, which is not necessarily a like make or break for me, but I wanna know if it's there. So we'll look at sizing first and then go to like the features um, and the details of the pattern, like. What in general shape is it? And then after that, we'll um, go over fabrics. So I have my little notes here. So I will probably be looking down a little bit, especially for like the nitty gritty of the sizing details. Um, I did think about like, if I should put my, I have an auto cue that I use for, I don't know why I did this motion. Um, an auto cue that I use for work where like, the word I can write out a script and like the words will come up on the screen. I thought about doing that, but then I was like, that's a lot of work for YouTube. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I was just going to keep things casual. So I've got my paper notes going to be checking those out every once in a while. First up, we have the Helen's closet Blackwood cardigan. This one comes with like so many glowing reviews, lots of recommendations. So I'm very excited to try this one out. So this one comes in a really great size range. It's zero to 34. And within that, there are options for a B or a D dressmaker's cup. So a dressmaker's cup is like the shorthand version for talking about the difference between your high bust measurement and your full bust measurement. So yeah, a B cup is a difference of two inches and a difference of four inches is referred to as the D cup, which is where I fall. Um, so sizes zero to 22 have that B option. And then starting at size 12, there's the D option. So that like 12 to 22, if you fall in those sizes, you can pick either depending on, um, yeah, that ratio as well as maybe like what your preference is when you look at your finished garment measurements. So I really, really love that. I love that the high best measurement is listed in the pattern <laughs> like there are other patterns that also have cup sizes but then they don't include the high bust measurement and it drives me up the wall so thank you bless you helen's closet for putting that information in there it really like i automatically trust a pattern so much more because that is really where i have a lot of fit issues for things that like fit around my larger bust. I usually have trouble like with the shoulders, that kind of thing. So having the high bust measurement like really helps me estimate everything else, determine if I need to do a narrow shoulder adjustment or not, like so helpful. So 
thank you again, Helen's Closet, for including that information. It's important. Anyway, <laughs> the other sizing information I wanted to put in here is the height for which the patterns are drafted. So this one is drafted for someone that is 5'6". I'm 5'7", so I think I'll be fine. I'm usually fine in Helen's Closet. I don't usually lengthen anything, but still good information and good to um, compare to the other two patterns. So shape-wise, the Blackwood is an open, close-fitting cardigan. It is not meant to close. Um, yeah, it's kind of meant to just like sit. I think there's, there's even like a measurement of where you can measure like from the opening around your back like to where the other side will fall. Again, thank you for including so much information in your instruction booklet. Like it helps make so many decisions. But again, it's not meant to wrap over or button. It just like hangs really nicely. I really like that style. It is a closer fit. So it's meant for layering over like t-shirts and tank tops and then no, to not be like very bulky, you can like slide it into a jacket or a coat without having like, yeah, big sleeve energy, which I know many of us love a statement sleeve, but in the springtime when like the weather is really unpredictable, I definitely like that option of just like slipping into a jacket or coat without, yeah, struggling. So yeah, even in this fabric, which is like, I don't know, it's a little hefty it's still not gonna be bulky. Um, so it comes in two lengths. So there's uh, the long length hits at like mid thigh and then the shorter version is like the top of the hip, which I think is a really nice length, especially for wearing just like with jeans or over a dress. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go for the short one, but I'm not quite sure yet. Um, Let's see. The other thing I really like about this pattern is that all of the edges are finished with bands. So that makes it super quick to sew up um, because you're not doing any hems. I love that because my sewing machine is like, for one, it is super slow when sewing knits, like lightning stitch and zigzag, <laughs> I had to do the motion, zigzag stitch, like they just, they take forever on my machine and the zigzag in particular tends to like stretch things out. So I don't love that. And if I can just sew everything on my overlocker, I much prefer. So that's great. The cuff, the neck band slash opening, as well as the bottom band are all just like, um, yeah, it's a really easy finish. Everything is like nicely enclosed. So I am excited about that. Uh, I think that of the three that I've chosen, that's kind of what makes this project like the easiest and the fastest. So that's nice. Um, if I didn't say already, there's an option for patch pockets. That's very cute. I don't think I'd put them on the short one, but I suppose you could. I don't know. They would probably be like here though. Anyway, uh, fabrics. I touched the mic. Sorry. Fabrics, you want uh, light to medium weight knits, of course, um, and you'll wanna look for something with 40% crossways stretch as well as 20% lengthwise stretch. I read a review of someone who just did, um, who only paid attention to the uh, crossways stretch and said it was like very uncomfortable because again, it is quite fitted. Um, and she said she had some trouble like through the back and shoulders because you need that stretch to like be able to reach and move around this way. So very important not to overlook. But yeah, that is the Blackwood cardigan. I'm very excited to try that one out. So next up is a pattern that I have had for years. Uh, this is the Seamwork Floor Cardigan. It is a super cute little wrap cardigan that I'm really excited to finally make. So this one is in Seamworks older size range. So it comes in zero to 26. And then in that they do have like a hard split between sizes zero to 16. That is the misses size range that comes with a C cup. And then there is the 18 to 26, which comes in a double D cup. Now, what do those cups mean? I do not know because they don't include a high bust measurement. Is it like 
Is it referring to a general like bra size? I don't know. Um, usually the curvy range fits me a bit better with that like double D cup, which if it's dressmakers would be like a five inch difference, even though I only have a four inch difference, it seems to fit. Or if it's a bra size, I don't know what to tell you because I definitely do not wear a double D, but uh, yeah, it's a bit confusing. I know that they have since updated some of their size range. They now have, um, I think three or four more sizes and it goes up to like a, I wanna say a 64 inch hip. So that's great. And they've also added like more overlap. So instead of just like zero to 16 as one range and then 18 to 20 or 18 to 30 as another with no like overlap, they now start that curvy range at I think size 12. And then the, um, the misses range like is also extended. So there's more overlap. I think that's very, very helpful. Again, they don't offer a ton of information on how to choose what size, except for obviously the finished garment measurements are generally helpful. Um, but then they also have like an ease chart within their instructions for each pattern. And that is really nice to just be able to like look at, instead of the finished garment measurements where you're kind of like doing some math of like, okay, what's the body measurement? Mine, okay. It just has like the ease chart and how it's drafted differently between the misses and curvy range. So I do like that. Should they have high best measurements? Yes, please. Seam work. Please do that. <laughs> okay, it's also drafted for a uh, 5'8 height. Again, I am 5'7, but I don't usually have to shorten things with seam work. I guess I'm like right in the average there enough. Um, so for this one, I'm looking at making a size 16 in the misses and grading down to a 14 at the hip. I'm curious how the bust is going to fit because yeah, I'm, I was in the curvy range, but I've recently like changed size. So like shape wise, I feel like I fit the curvy range better, even though my measurements are smaller. So yeah, I'm not just like sizing down, I'm like sizing into a whole other like drafting range. So I'm like, I'm a little nervous about that, to be honest. It does have three inches of ease in the bust. So hopefully that'll be fine. We'll see. It's a wrap cardigan. So moving into like shape and design, it's a wrap cardigan, which is the thing that makes me like, ooh. Yeah, wraps are always like tricky for, for busty folks. So it's a wrap cardigan. Um, it comes in two lengths. So again, it's like that high, ending at the high hip versus ending mid thigh. It's a little bit shorter, I think, than the black wood, but you know, comparable options. Um, this one has a belt and belt loops uh, you know, for that like wrap over. The hems of the sleeve and the well, hem of the garment are just a like turn and stitch. Not my favorite. I'm definitely gonna have to play with some interfacing probably to make sure, especially on this like rib that um, my machine doesn't stretch it out. So gonna take some precautions there. And then the neckline is finished with a facing. So for that you use um, knit interfacing which I'll talk about that in a minute because um, there's some interesting stuff that came up with the next pattern. Doesn't use knit interfacing. Um, yeah, so for fabrics, again, you're looking at medium weight knits. This one you'll want 50% uh, crossways stretch and it doesn't have any notes about any lengthwise stretch. So my fabric has both. I don't remember measuring the uh, lengthwise I mean, it's got some, it probably has about 20. Um, yeah, and this is the cross is definitely plenty. So yeah, that's that one. Really excited to actually make something that has been in my pattern stash for years. So yeah, that'll be the floor. Another one that has been in my stash for ages is the Cashmere Fuller cardigan. So this is 
yeah, an older pattern. I'm not quite sure when it was released, but it doesn't come in like their full range. It does start at size 12, so it's 12 to 32. It comes with three bust options. So they are sizes C, D, E, F, and G, H. Now these ones explicitly refer to bra size, which I find a bit confusing because um, yeah, like different brands of different bras, like very, very different. Um, but I'll always like give Cashmere a pass on that because they were the first company, at least like that I'm aware of, that started offering different options for different shapes. So I really appreciate that. And I get that like at the time, high bust measurements and dressmakers cups were not really in people's minds, I guess. Um, but the bra sizes do like roughly translate, like the CD is like a dressmaker's B cup, the EF, a C, um, and the GH is relatively a dressmaker's D cup. Now it's a bit hard to say because they don't put high bust measurements in this pattern. I think that some of their newer ones do, but this one doesn't. And it has you pick your cup size based on your waist, which I think is madness. Um, yeah, I, I, th I think it's very silly. Again, like cashmere gets a pass for like being the first one to care about curvy people, <laughs> and, like to make plus size patterns with cups involved. Like, yes, but I really, I really wish there were high bust measurements. Um, yeah, this pattern does come with uh, also like not only just the options for bust, but also for bicep. So there's a standard and full bicep, which is really, really great. Um, I looked at my sizing and it looks like I will be doing a size 14 in the GH cup. And then I do have like a standard adjustment that I make for cashmere patterns. Um, I think I need to move to the like zero to 16 range from what I've read about that drafting. I think it will fit me a little bit better. Um, the adjustment that I make pretty standard on cashmere patterns is I like extend the waist. So there's a whole like blog post about the difference between the zero to 16 and 12 to 32 size ranges. Um, so there's lots of information there if you're interested and want to check it out. But one of the main differences is, um, where the waist point is. So on the 12 to 32 range, it's quite high and it's quite short. So it goes from um, yeah, bust to waist pretty immediately, like ranging out into the hips. Whereas like I have quite a long chunk of waist cause I basically am shaped like this. <laughs> um, I read somewhere that like it's called an H butt, <laughs> like a very like square <laughs> hip. I like am this big and then I am this big. So it is not like a smooth any, anyway. So I usually extend the waist a little bit um, and like ease out the curve um, a bit because yeah, it's usually pretty pronounced and I just kind of like bring that in a little bit. So that is what I will probably be doing on this one. Um, so features of the pattern, it's a little more interesting than like nitty gritty sizing. Uh, it's a raglan sleeve, which I really, really like. Um, very cute, it has a button front. The two views are really different. I kind of like that there's like sort of a casual cardigan and then like kind of a more like dainty, fancier one. I mean, your choice of fabric like is always gonna determine that more than the line drawing probably, but yeah, so you have um, the longer cardigan uh, reaches down to like mid, mid hip. Um, that one has long sleeves, a V neck and a much like thicker button band. Um, so you want those like oversized buttons, which again, I think that's what kind of makes it like a bit more casual. Um, and then the other one has a jewel neckline, which I think is just a fancy way of saying a round neck, but you know, 
correct me if I'm wrong, I guess. Um, so it has a round neck um, and a much thinner, um, yeah, facing and button placket, so much smaller buttons. And it is a cropped length, which is initially why I bought this pattern because it was in my like fit and flare days where I really wanted a layering piece um, that if I wore like a fuller skirt was not going to like box me in or get stuck like on the shape of the skirt. So it is nicely cropped. Um, both views have everything um, ending in, no, that's not true. It has the, it has cuffs at the wrist and a band around the bottom. And then the neckline slash opening is done with a facing. Interestingly, this facing calls for non-stretch interfacing, which is confusing to me. It's like, I feel like you'd want and I know you need the structure for like the buttonholes. That definitely makes sense, but it does still seem weird on like a curved knit garment um, to have that much structure. So, I mean, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna see, and I will report back, but it seems odd to me, but we'll see. What, what do I know? I've never made a cardigan. I don't know why I'm <laughs> making a judgment at this point. I will report back. Um, the other thing that I really like about this pattern is that it has darts. So it has darts both at the uh, shoulder here, which is gonna shape that uh, raglan sleeve a little bit better. I am a huge fan of the dart on um, the forget-me-not Valerie dress. I feel like it takes, especially, and that one's on a woven, so you like have even more, it's even more intense, but like, it just shapes this area like so much nicer and makes sure that like you don't have extra baggage here, which is usually my problem. So I love that there's a dart there. There's also a bust dart, which more knit garments need to have bust darts. Like some of my favorite ready to wear knit items have bust darts. And I'm like, why do we not have this in, in the sewing world? Like this, it seems so silly. Like, it helps so much. So you don't always need it, I guess, if depending on the stretch of your fabric, but I think it's really helpful for shaping. So I'm really excited to try that out. Um, fabrics, um, I think I wrote this down wrong. Uh, you'll need a mid-weight knit, and I wrote that it should have 50% cross stretch. But I don't think that's true. I think it's supposed to be 15, because as I was reading it, I was like, whoa, that's not a lot which opens up your fabric possibilities quite a bit. Um, I'm pretty sure it's 15, even though I wrote the other thing. Um, so again, non-stretch interfacing. And then for this one, you'll also need some buttons. So the big ones, it calls for 25 millimeter or 12 millimeter for the smaller, for the round neck, daintier one. So those are my cardigan plans. Again, I haven't like quite blished out um, which color is going to be for which pattern, but uh, I will keep you in the loop and hopefully I'm going to take my time through making these up, um, but you'll probably see some, some sneak peeks here and there and I'm excited to report back about my cardigan making experience. Again, I've not done it. I'm a little nervous, but uh, yeah, should be fun. So. If you want to follow along, best way to do that is to subscribe if you're not already. I know this is like classic YouTube plug, but it does really help. And like, you know, if you give me a like, that helps YouTube like show it to other people. So do all of that stuff, would you please? <laughs> um, and I'll be back next week with either my February mix or my plans for March. So see you then and Till next time, happy making. Bye.